What if I told you the most important part of reality is completely invisible to you? Here's why you can't see it. Picture this. You open your eyes tomorrow and nothing feels familiar. The streets you've walked a thousand times look strange. Your home, your friends, even your own reflections seem slightly shifted. It's as though reality itself has slipped and you're standing at the edge of something new. Now here's the question. What if this wasn't a dream? What if reality is far less fixed than we assume and you actually have the power to bend it? This is not fantasy. This is the invitation to begin thinking in the fourth dimension, a way of seeing and living that moves you beyond the surface of space and time into a field where your mind and reality are woven together. Stay with me until the end, because once you glimpse this way of thinking, the world you know will never look the same again. Before we leap into the unknown, let's anchor ourselves. We live in three dimensions, length, width, and height. These define the playground of our physical experience. From buildings and mountains to the very room you're sitting in right now, everything is expressed in these three axes. But philosophers, mystics, and scientists alike have long wondered what lies beyond. The fourth dimension is often linked to time, the unseen river in which the three-dimensional world floats. But when we speak of thinking in the fourth dimension, we're talking about something different, a mental leap where the boundaries of past, present, and future dissolve. Here, reality isn't a fixed sculpture, it's clay, and you are not just an observer, but a sculptor. This isn't just poetic imagination. Modern physics gives us a window into something astonishing. In the quantum realm, particles do not behave like tiny billiard balls. They exist in superposition, multiple states at once until the moment they're observed. It's as though reality itself is undecided, waiting for consciousness to make a choice. Philosophy adds another layer. Thinkers like Immanuel Kant argued that space and time are not external things, but frameworks created by the human mind. If that's true, then by shifting our consciousness, we're not only perceiving reality differently, we may actually be participating in its creation. So fourth dimensional thinking isn't about finding a doorway to a parallel universe. It's about stepping into a new way of using your mind, where possibility is infinite and the present moment becomes a canvas you can paint upon. Let's make this practical. Every great invention, from the wheel to the internet, began in one place, the imagination. When Nikola Tesla visualized his electrical engines, he claimed he could run them in his mind for weeks before ever touching a piece of metal. Leonardo da Vinci sketched flying machines centuries before a human being ever left the ground. This is more than daydreaming. Neuroscience shows that when you vividly imagine an experience, the same neural pathways fire as if you were actually living it. The brain doesn't always distinguish between the real and the imagined. Close your eyes and imagine a version of yourself who already lives the life you desire. Notice the details, the sounds, the environment, the way your body feels. For a few moments, let that imagined self feel realer than the present. What you're doing at that moment is stepping into the fourth dimension of thought. But imagination alone is like a spark without wood. To shape reality, it must be joined by belief. Your beliefs form the invisible boundaries of your world. If you believe you are limited, that nothing changes, then reality obeys. If you believe that change is possible, doors appear where walls once stood, and belief is amplified by emotion. Emotions are energy in motion. They ripple outward, shaping the way you act, the way people respond to you, and the way opportunities unfold. 
When you combine belief with emotion, when you feel gratitude for a life you're only beginning to imagine, you are no longer wishing. You are living in that dimension already. So how do you carry this beyond meditation and into everyday existence? Let's ground it. Reframe problems. Instead of seeing obstacles as dead ends, see them as invitations to shift perspective. The problem is not the block, it's the signpost pointing toward growth. Practice mindfulness. Meditation allows the mind to step outside the rushing stream of linear time. In stillness, you begin to sense that reality is far larger and more fluid than your daily schedule implies. Shift your language. Words are seeds. Saying, I am becoming, instead of, I wish I could, changes how your subconscious organizes reality. Speak as though your desired future is already unfolding. Align with environments. Surround yourself with people and spaces that encourage growth. Just as plants bend towards sunlight, your mind bends toward the energy it's immersed in. These aren't abstract practices. They are the daily disciplines that train your mind to stay in the fourth dimension instead of snapping back into the narrow box of ordinary perception. Of course, the mind doesn't give up old habits easily. Doubt will whisper, this isn't real, you're just imagining things. Fear will step in. What if you fail? What if nothing changes? But doubt and fear aren't enemies, they're indicators. They show that you're brushing against the edges of your comfort zone. Think of it like the soreness after a workout. It's not a signal to quit. It's proof you're stretching into new territory. The moment you learn to treat resistance as evidence of growth, you unlock a kind of inner freedom. So what does it mean to live daily in this way? It's about remembering that every thought and every emotion is a brushstroke on the canvas of your future. Gratitude turns your attention toward what is already abundant, multiplying it in your awareness. Curiosity keeps the mind open to new paths that the linear self would miss. Intention ensures you are not drifting, but steering. Living in the fourth dimension doesn't mean denying the physical world. Bills, deadlines, and responsibilities remain. But it means carrying an awareness that these are not chains, they're clay. Clay you can shape with thought, belief, and consistent action. So here we stand, at the threshold of a new way of seeing. To think in the fourth dimension is to realize you are not simply a passenger in life. You are both traveler and cartographer, mapping out worlds that don't yet exist, then walking into them. The question is not whether you can do this. The question is, what reality will you choose to create? If this exploration sparked something in you, subscribe for more journeys into the philosophy of mind, reality, and existence. And tell me in the comments, what shift will you begin making in your life today? Because your new reality is closer than you think. In fact, it's already waiting for you, just beyond the horizon of thought.